Spiritual Teaching 247 Love Each Other 1. Welcome you, O people, who draw near to me in increasing numbers every day. Behold the Master of all times that come to deliver the lesson of love to those who wait for him with good will. 2. I receive you all as I did in the second era and I speak to you with the same essence because I am the same Master. Among you are many of those who heard my word, of those who witnessed my passage through earth and who looked at my works with indifference. But among them, many listened to me with respect, they drank my words with anxiety and they were ecstatic with the light of my lessons, which offered them a paradise and an unknown world of eternal bliss for the spirit. This is how the hungry and thirsty for love, the sick, the sad and downtrodden received me. How many looked for me and they came before my presence after long days, because they knew that the healing was going to be done in them, that I could heal them, because I am the life and the resurrection for the Spirit. 3. Also in this time I have found hearts full of faith, who have come hurriedly and have known how to receive in their spirit my divine word and have healed. 4. Much is what I have to teach you so that you become my disciples, and when you are ready, you I will send humanity, I will open the ways for you to sow my seed and harmonize with all those who love me and seek me spiritually. But those who have not yet begun their steps on the path of spirituality, take them by the hand until you can find yourselves all united marching on the same path. 5. Always go forward. My children, seek wisdom so that you will find the essence of life. Love and you can penetrate my arcane. There will be no secrets. Everything will be revealed to you when you climb the top of true love. 6. The children of now will be the apostles tomorrow, and you can become so from now on. Do not want, out of vanity, leave the memory of your name among the brotherhood. Imitate the good apostles, surpass them if you want, but do it just for the love of humanity. Seek the good, work for peace, always point out the path of perfection. 7. I inspire you in your meditations so that you go in my name to comfort the sick and teach your brothers to return to me, seeking harmony, health, and peace. Give this much-loved humanity the secret of health. Tell it that it must return to simplicity, purity, prayer, and pious practices, and in it you will find all that you could desire. I will accompany you at the time of your fulfillment, I encourage you, to continue on that path in which all of you must recognize, narrow and a train of just one family. Whenever you extend your hand to give charity, my effluvium will descend and you will perceive that the, the environment is saturated with an exquisite perfume that will emanate from your good works. 8. Blessed are all those who are opening the way for humanity, who are preparing their future. Point out this time of grace in which you live with works that will be imprinted on the conscience of your brothers. Those will be your pioneering steps, the best call you can make to them and the inheritance that will endure. 9. Avoid pain, prevent and teach with examples, so that humanity is soon channeled. I don't want to see it cry or keep stumbling. She is my much-loved daughter whom I have come to rescue. 10. Walkers, you will find yourself under the shadow of the stout tree and delighting in its fruit. 11. Right here there is a source of pure and crystalline waters where you can quench your thirst, because everything you need, here you can find it. 12. I have seen you strong. When hunger, fatigue and thirst have disappeared from you, I have told you. Set your eyes on those who perish of need. 13. The star that guides you and that is your guide has shone over everyone, but not everyone has been able to contemplate it, and those are the ones who have been lost. 14. Thus I contemplate the spirit of humanity in this time. Hungry, because the bread has been hidden from him, shipwrecked, because he has weakened before the passions of the world and has not found a saving hand that reaches out to him. 15. From now on I prepare you as fishermen of spirits so that you can rescue your brothers with love. 16. Be a staff for the sick and weary because you are already strong. Heal wounds whether of the spirit or of the body, pouring my balm on them. If the thirsty do not have the strength to reach me, you bring the water to their lips. 17. This is my eternal law of love that I am dictating to you. Let your heart be the new ark where it is kept, and then that inner light will be the one that guides your steps and traces the path for those who follow you. 
18. My word is at this time the manna that feeds your spirit in its journey of vicissitudes, hardships and struggles, similar to crossing the desert. But this manna is from eternal life. It is not like the one that fed the people of Israel only for the time that the desert journey lasted, and of which the sons of that people kept a handful of memories as relic. 19. Men and women, remain faithful to my teachings, so that you may be among your brothers as light to dispel the darkness. Set a good example for children so that they may be like an inextinguishable lamp in the home. 20. Blessed are my beloved creatures, in whom I contemplate the zeal and at the same time the pain, a deep pain, because you know this time is ending. Very little is what you have taken advantage of my teaching, but in truth I tell you, the time of grace will not end. I will be close to you guarding your step. The eyes of the prophets will behold me walking before the chosen people. 21. I am infinite love, sublime charity, and I never leave my sons. My spirit is always close to yours, waiting for the call to give you my caress. You have never been the orphans and if at times you feel alone, it is because you have abandoned me. But now I contemplate that you want to feel the effluvium of my grace. 22. Blessed is he who calls me, because I descend and remain in his heart. He who seeks the light of my spirit will be enlightened. Whoever calls me as father will find me as father. If you need me as doctor, you will have me with you and you will feel my balm. He who will call me as a brother, I will extend to him my charity to guide and console him, and whoever asks me as a teacher will receive the lesson in his heart. 23. Nothing is impossible for me. I am the Almighty, and the infinite love that I feel for my creatures makes me spill my charity and my forgiveness among humanity. That he does not see your weaknesses, that he only come to elevate the spirit, because he is part of my spirit and belongs to me. Above him is consciousness. I have come to prepare you as a column, because I am going to build a new world, a world of peace and light. 24. And you who, like the disciples of the second era, listen to my word, ask me to be a valuable instrument for my work and I give you strength and light. In each of your steps you will feel me. 25. I want you to understand my word of this time, to be engraved in your heart and also to understand the meaning of my coming in the second era, because what happened at that time was the work of redemption of the Spirit. 26. I descended from perfection as a Savior, becoming a man on earth. I came to fulfill the mission to save every one of my creatures who since Adam had fallen into sin through their disobedience. His weakness caused his spirit to fall further, and in the proper time, in fulfillment of the announcements of the coming of the Messiah, I became a man to give my teaching and removing the chains of the Spirit and giving him the resurrection. 27. You all know what happened in the upper room. The bread and wine that I gave to my disciples was sustenance for all the universe. It symbolized my essence and my love, which floats over all my children, believers and unbelievers. The light of my Spirit was given to all. 28. I washed the feet of my apostles to show my humility and ask them to get up on the roads of the earth, prepare with all my heart with my love, with this. Immense love that I feel for everyone, so that no one gets lost and everyone come to me. And this act teaches you to cleanse yourselves from all sin when you go to begin the fulfillment of your mission. 29. There was nothing hidden from me what could men plot against me that I had not known before? Everything was prepared according to my will, and as it developed, this was the way destined by me to convince the hearts. They took me to the cross and stripped my body, tied my hands and feet to the tree, and this is the symbol of the cross. 30. The horizontal stake is the sin of the world which stands in the way of the vertical stake. He ascends and points to the heights but sin is always the barrier to rise to the divine. 31. I was nailed to that tree and as my spirit contemplated the coldness of hearts, the horror and then their joy to see that martyred body and the face decomposed by pain, my lips uttered those words, Forgive them, Lord, because they don't know what they're doing. And now in this time, again I forgive you, because you have not understood me yet. How many of my creatures say they love me and do not love me, how many believing to serve me, 
are serving temptation. 32. Once again my eyes fall on the crowds, recognizing one and the other of those who surrounded me, of those who having received prodigies a while before, they did not know how to recognize me. 33. I contemplated in those faces, not mercy or love, that is why I said to humanity, I am thirsty. It was not the thirst of body, he was thirsty for the spirit, who made those words flow, his thirst for the love of humanity. Far from love, I saw in them the satisfaction, the pleasure for having made me suffer to death. Then the earth shook, the sun was hidden, and it was that my spirit was leaving the body of Jesus. 34. My children contemplated the body, on which fell all the weight of sin and the reproach of the world and matter tortured. He exclaimed, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? 35. Then I fixed my gaze on the face of Mary, full of pain, on my apostle John and on those women who accompanied Mary and knowing that humanity would recognize me. Wanting to leave one more proof of love, I entrusted to Mary the care and protection of all my children and I said, Woman, here is your son, and to John, Son, here is your mother. It was the inheritance that I deposited at that time in humanity. John represented the son, humanity. Mary was entrusted to you to eternally watch over, comfort and protect all my creatures. 36. Then I looked for the one who cried out full of anguish, the one who could also be found, nailed on a cross, Demas. I entered his heart and saw his great regret. He said to me, they are sacrificing you who are perfect, have mercy on me, I have sinned. I consoled him by saying, Truly and truly, in a few moments with me you will be in paradise. 37. Bodily death was approaching Jesus and then I uttered these words, Father, into your hands I entrust my spirit. I taught you to return to the Father after the fulfillment of his mandates. 38. My last words were, Everything is finished. Blessed is the heart that can reach the end of its journey because I will receive him and he will be found full of grace and perfection. 39. These are the seven words that the world hears, year by year, without understanding their spiritual meaning. 40. My disciples and friends, after Jesus' death, rescued the body, embalmed it as was customary, and they buried him. During the next three days, my spirit descended to the worlds where the spirits awaited me to give them freedom and point the way. Redemption also extended to those creatures that inhabited the darkness, waiting for their Savior. 41. Afterwards I appeared making myself visible and visited my mother, Mary Magdalene, and also my disciples. And before my ascension I gave them the last teaching, to indicate to them how they were to conduct themselves among humanity, carrying my infinite wisdom the perfect teaching to resurrect all spirits. 42. And now that the time is coming to say goodbye to you, I say to you, after this stage of teaching, do not fear, the spirit has evolved and you do not need to look at me with your material eyes. It is no longer necessary for you to hear my word in material lips. The spirit has evolved, it has risen and he will receive spiritually. I'll keep pointing the way to each of my disciples. 43. I am giving my instructions to all my children. The Master tells you, when you have transformed your portions in fertile plots, where love bears fruit, union and fraternity will reign among you. Then you can consider you are my disciples. 44. Sometimes I speak to you in figurative language so that you can penetrate the lessons and I speak to you at length so that there is nothing that you stumble on or fall into confusion. If not, you would have already created badges, grades, and classifications between the disciples and the toddlers, between the first and the last in your congregations. And amid feasts you would crown with fictitious laurels, because humans have a penchant for vanity and ostentation. 45. Sow among yourselves the seeds of brotherhood, which my apostles cultivated at that time. That seed was the example with which they founded congregations, villages, and cities. 46. What do you need to know to teach my doctrine? To love. It is impossible for you to be missionaries of Christ if you do not have love in your heart. You will all come to me and it will be for love. 
Some will arrive earlier and others later. Those who take the longest for their own cause will have to cry more. Everybody, you are like flowers that do not open at the same time to receive the clarity of the new day. If your heart has remained closed to divine love, now I tell you, your past is past, now eternity it claims. I have in my hands the book of your past life, in which there are certainly many spots, but also there are the clean pages of your future life and your transformation. I see everything and I know it. 47. I tell you again that you will all meet with me, but each one will have to conquer the height by himself. That conquest you can easily do out of love or painfully out of pain. I help you, I comfort you and I direct you, but it is up to you to do the rest. I strengthen you, and that force is that of love, the true energy that moves the universe, everything created and without which you would not exist. I also hide the book of your past from you, because if you were to contemplate its pages, you would cry with grief and become ill of sadness. In many, their horror and bitterness would be so great that they would be considered unworthy of forgiveness and redemption. There, in those darkness, my love also shines, preventing you from a terrible and endless agony, and preparing new paths where you can, with clean works, regenerate your spirit. But if you knew the page's future of the book of your life, how would you smile with happiness? 48. When you have already risen, you will remember with joy your past pains and give thanks to the Father, because those pains were less than what you deserved. 49. Here is my word given by the understanding of man, which, to be perfect as you wish, it is necessary that you become spiritualized and labor in it to your brothers for whom I speak. Give them knowledge, reassurance, and encouragement. His work is delicate for the spirit and strongly heavy for matter. My work needs strong spokespersons, only thus he will be able to do the wonders that the incredulous world demands, that is, those who imitate Thomas in their doubt, those who they need to see and touch to convince themselves, ignoring that they too could do wonders if they imitated more of the Master who speaks to you. 50. Spokesman for my word. As long as your work is not understood and you see that you do not receive the care and consideration that you deserve for the work that you carry out, resign yourselves, forgive, do not lose your affability. More when you feel the spiritual touch of my light that seeks your understanding, and then sprout from your lips, think of me, give yourselves up with joy serving your brothers. I will respond to your preparation, filling you with grace in those instants. For you to be worthy of all this, it is necessary that you sweeten yourselves and carry in your heart the feeling of true charity. 51. Do not think in the moment of preparing for my communication, in wisdom or in philosophies of the earth, because everything will be useless before my wisdom. I am the one who inspired you in your ecstasies and who gives you strength to perform your delicate mission. If you give yourself to me, what can you fear? 52. Pray, but may your prayer be made up of your intentions and works of the day. That will be your best prayer. But if you want to address a thought to me, formulating a request with it, tell me then, Father, let your will be done in me. In it you will be asking for even more than you could understand and hope for, and that simple phrase, that thought, it will simplify that, Our Father, which you asked of me in another time. 53. There you have the prayer that asks for everything and that will best speak for you. But let not your lips say it, but feel it in your heart, because saying is not feeling and if you feel it, you don't need to tell me. I know how to listen to the voice of the Spirit and I understand your language. 54. What greater joy for you than knowing this? Do you think that I needed you to tell me what I have to do? Do not affirm yourselves in the belief that for my communications I need adequate places, special clothes and even determined attitudes so that I manifest myself. Days will come when my inspiration is with you anywhere and at any time, in front of various crowds before whom you will express my thought with words and languages that everyone will understand. 55. The only temple where this word will resound will be in the heart of your brother. Are you going to learn languages to know how to give my word in languages other than the one you speak? I tell you that you will express my ideas, which are light, and each who will receive them in their own language, as happened when my apostles spoke of my kingdom to men of various peoples or languages. Those who accept these wonders call them miracles, 
while others deny them, judging them impossible. But I tell you, they are small things that you can do without effort when you are truly disciples of my love. Follow the impulses of your heart. O oh, my spokesman, without imitating anyone, see that each one has a mission to fulfill. 56. People. Multiply yourselves, help with your thoughts these who are my instruments. They in their ecstasy give you the spiritual light, the delicacy that strengthens and delights you. They serve for you to learn. Tomorrow, others will do for you what you do for them today. You can say that the external form of language with which I spoke in the second time and the one that I now use are different, and in part of you will be right. Because Jesus spoke to you at that time within the terms and customs of the peoples that he lived as I do today according to the mentality of those who listen to my word. But the essence that comes from that word given in one and another time, it is the same, it is one, it is unalterable. However, this has gone unnoticed by many who have hardened hearts and closed minds. 57. There are always those who stray from the root to go outside, where they get confused and get lost without knowing it. The language manifested in any of my children for whom I speak to you is of great simplicity and purity, reveals love and has spiritual essence. But do not be seduced by flowery terms that sound very good in your ear and say nothing to your heart. 58. Let your heart tremble before your brain because he is the owner of it. The higher he is a man, he loves more, he feels more humble and he is healthier. 59. Seek my work in the purest and highest of your faith, your love and your conceptions. Not to complicate with useless knowledge, nor obscure with external worship, the clarity of this doctrine. Do not forget that for these reasons and others that I will tell you later, you have been lost from the true path. 60. What do you prefer? Look for me through the objects you create to represent me, or receive directly into your heart the touch of my love or the call of my voice. Spiritualize yourselves. Truly I tell you, whoever achieves this will have something worth more than all titles and appointments on earth put together. 61. You will see prodigies when this is, and even before, many incredible events will happen. Go ahead, disciples. Do not let yourself be surprised by spirits lacking in light, whether incarnated or disembodied, but love and help them. They too are my very beloved children, who will seek me as you sought me. I will then go out to meet him, and I will receive him in my arms like the prodigal son. My peace be with you.